after the release of Deadpool and Wolverine, I had one massive question, and that is, who is the anchor of the MCU? And if you haven't seen the movie yet, you might not know what that means, but the anchor is the being that basically holds the entire universe together, and once they die, the universe slowly starts to perish. And I thought this would be an interesting video to make because I haven't seen too many people talking about it. I've seen some people on Twitter... But other than that, there's not a lot of videos to go off of, so let's make our own theories to this. So with that said, I do want to kind of lay off a couple theories first off of how this all works. And I think some of this might come from Reddit because I saw a census chalice 66 posted this in a thread and said maybe this has to do with loki reviving the dead dying branches maybe those branches only had their respective anchor stories still intact so loki used those individual stories as anchors to kickstart their branches again and then i saw a couple other things asking what about old age and young age i wanted to include that in here in that conversation of like well what if someone hasn't been born or someone dies of old age for me I still think an anchor being can be one of those things. Someone that was maybe born in the MCU, maybe someone that was born a little bit later in the MCU, maybe someone that was born prior to it, or maybe just someone who dies of old age. I think that is a respective thing. I view it as an entire timeline that once the timeline was created, there was an anchor somewhere in there decided on and picked on. And I think that's where it's going to be fun to dive into this today. So make sure to leave your thoughts down below. Hit that like and subscribe button. And again, understand this is my opinion. You may disagree with it, but that's where I want to see your guys' thoughts down below and in the comment section. Jumping into my number 10, it's Shang-Chi. I think out of all the new characters, I was trying to at least pick one for the MCU that we got after Endgame and thinking which character would they honestly choose to make the anchor of this all. And it really felt like Shang-Chi. I looked at Miss Marvel for a little bit, but after the failure of the Marvels, I think that kind of just showcased that eh, maybe this isn't going to go completely in that realm. But now being able to look at all this and actually have a, a full decision, I think Shang-Chi is the one to go with. He's already somewhat been brought into the greater good of the MCU, specifically with his end credit scene on with Wong, Captain Marvel, and Hulk. And we haven't had a sequel, nor any other viewpoints of him in this world. And I've really been wanting him to get that. I think we will get a Shang-Chi 2 announcement. But if we were to bring him into the greater arcing of the MCU, to bring him into everything else, maybe find out that he's the anchor and that he is the protective tissue. Because I think... Whoever is the anchor will be the MacGuffin of the next two Avengers films, Avengers Doomsday and Avengers Secret Wars. And I think that's fascinating. You can bring Shang-Chi very much easily into here. Plus, he has like a bunch of armies that you could easily add to him that add to the overall structure and big element of the war of this. Let me get into my number nine, and that is Doctor Strange. Now, this one I went back and forth with even putting on the list, but deciding on how much Doctor Strange is very much involved with the mysticism, the multiverse, and everything like that, specifically after Multiverse of Madness, and what I assume will happen in Doctor Strange 3, this is a character that I think easily fits the thread if, if he dies, this entire timeline starts to perish with him. And I think that adds to the overall arcing great structure of it, where, to be honest with you, if he is the anchor, I think genuinely Doctor Strange knows he's the anchor and how important he is because of how knowledgeable the damn guy is. So is it going to be him? It's lower on the list, so probably not. But I think with the mysticism and everything he brings into it, I could easily see it happening. Then we get into my number eight. And this one I'm going to try really hard not to get emotional on. And that's mostly because I miss this actor so much. But if we were to include the legacy of him and include his legacy into this all, maybe T'Challa was the anchor of this entire universe. And when he sadly passed, uh, just Chadwick Boseman in general, um... You know, the legacy of Black Panther got shifted to Shuri, and a lot of people have really wanted a T'Challa in this world. And I know for me, I definitely do. I think eventually we will get a recast, um, specifically after Secret Wars. But to bring in that last little bit, to focus everything around Chadwick, I think would be, again, maybe not the best for some, and maybe not the worst for some. I like the idea. I don't think they do. I think there's some people who, again, would hate this idea. But there's other parts of me that really like the approach that keeping Chadwick alive in spirit throughout these movies would be kind of special. So I'll keep it there. Getting on my number seven, and this is Kang. Now, Kang has obviously been in Loki, had an appearance in Quantumania, got defeated by ants. I think Kang is an interesting one because even though I don't think he'll be a main staking player in the MCU anymore, I think he is a character that you could easily recast again, bring back in, and have Doctor Doom destroy. And that death of Kang leads into everything within the anchor. And I think it gives us a nice conclusion 
to everything that was set up in Quantum Mania and, of course, Loki. But at the same point in time, it also gives us a conclusion to this character because what Kevin Feige said at the Marvel Studios panel for Hall H is no thread left behind. He primarily said this with the leader, but I think that really goes with everything in the MCU. And I think eventually they always come back to everything. You can't just leave the Kang stuff hanging specifically for fans who were a major fan of it. And I think this is a way to bring it into the overarching thing and make it feel a little bit more conclusive. Get into my number six. And this one I'm only putting in here because he's the goody two shoes, the best guy in very much the entire world in the MCU, and that is Captain America Steve Rogers. Everyone respects the damn dude, and when it comes down to it, he was able to pick up Mjolnir, he feels worthy. Everything to his approach is something special, and I feel if Captain America Steve Rogers was the anchor to this, eventually, we know he's out there. Maybe he dies of old age or something of that nature. That adds to it, or maybe a different Captain America from a different point in time comes back and says... I need your guys' help, and it forms and brings everyone together because of what has now approached to this circumstance. And again, it's the MCU. They can somehow figure it out. Even then, it does bring again Captain America and a reason to have Chris Evans back in here, and it will be interesting if we got him being able to fight an evil Tony Stark or an evil Robert Downey Jr. in this world. Let's get into my number five, and my number five is the Scarlet Witch. Now, Scarlet Witch, to some people, is dead. Some people don't believe she's dead. I'm one of the people that don't. I think she's off in some other place just trying to reconcile for her sins that she did in Multiverse of Madness. And I think for me, making her the anchor being is emotional in a couple different ways. One, because she probably feels like she doesn't deserve to be protected or treated and if they're using this character as the MacGuffin that either needs to be protected or a MacGuffin approach to keeping their universe alive Scarlet Witch feels like a very safe pick for that and honestly I would have had her higher on this if I hadn't heard rumors that she wasn't the anchor but also part of me doesn't believe all those rumors so I still wanted to select her here there's been rumors she might be getting her own solo film. She's somehow going to come back in some capacity, I believe, and I think this might be the capacity that she does. There's a character arc coming off of Multiverse of Madness. I think that's a solid one and would be a fun surprise if we didn't know she was in the Avengers movie and eventually they find her and they're like, we have to protect you, and she shows up and it, you know the you know the fan base would cheer. Get into my number four, which is Thanos. And Thanos for me is one that has already died in the MCU. But all comes back to that ticking timeline and that question of, was Thanos right in what he did? We had that same question within the Eternals that, again, if we had never brought everyone back to life, the Eternals events really wouldn't have sufficed or happened, and that timing tick that ticking time bomb would have stopped. And for general, a lot of planets, it would have stopped. But now that Thanos died and they fixed the whole problem, that event happened. And say this is another event that might also happen. Which again, circumstances back to the whole point of Thanos was right. And I think having that debate and having that theory come around is again that full circle thing of connecting the Infinity Saga to the Multiverse Saga. And honestly, I would like it. We get into my number three and that is Loki. Now Loki's an interesting character because what other, however you're playing in the timeline, like technically he's died in the Avengers timeline. But also like he technically didn't because then they went back in time and brought him through the whole spear. It's a lot of mumbo jumbo, but for me to really actually like look at this as a whole, Loki is a character that is right now holding all the branches. And if he were to suffice and again, come to the fruition that he is the anchor being of it all, maybe he is the anchor being, maybe he made himself the anchor being if that crackpot theory was true, because then how we would come to fruition on that is bringing to life something special here. And I think if we were to look at the way that Loki suffices and brings that to fruition, it is something special. And again, then you can bring him back into the entire Avengers world in a capacity that makes makes sense and you get some things with Thor and some other lovely things and reunions that I think would be interesting and again it all goes back to like the great character arc that they built off Loki in the Loki TV show I think this is nice payoff for it all we come into my number two and that is Iron Man now I went back and forth Iron Man being number one being number two I don't think he is overall the anchor but then there's the other aspect of me of that was like no maybe he is maybe after Endgame like the anchor being did die and this universe started to die itself. And it's kind of meta to the approach of how some people have said the MCU has been dying since Endgame. But also like the meta approach that Robert Downey Jr. is returning as Doctor Doom for this universe. And if you bring that back in of him coming in and whatever his plan is, well, the anchor being looked just like him. And if they were to discover that and find that out, an emotional being 
makes me cry. Same thing with seeing some of the stuff from Logan in the Deadpool and Wolverine screens. I thought that was such a brilliant usage of it. And I think there's ways to bring that in and say Iron Man was as well. Like, look at this all. I think my number one is the one that I think is going to be it, and that is Spider-Man. And I think the reason that it is is for multiple different reasons. First off, the Russo brothers are a huge fan of the character of Spider-Man. They brought him in in Civil War, had great usage of him in Infinity War, and specifically Endgame. But also with Spider-Man itself, right now he's street level. No one remembers him. No one knows who he is. They know who Spider-Man is, but they don't know that Peter Parker is that. And I think if you want to bring back this character out of the limelight, obviously, if aliens and shit started attacking New York, Tom Holland, Spider-Man would jump right back into action. But if you want him back within the Avengers and that entire crew, it's them discovering that Spider-Man is the anchor being. And it is, it's done in a way that I feel doesn't negate what No Way Home brought to life and what it stakes it left off at the end. Now, again, this all really ties into whatever the fuck happens in Spider-Man 5, but... It doesn't take that away, and I feel like it slowly brings him back into this world where maybe he doesn't have to share his identity. It's just known that he is the anchor being. And I think, again, with the Russo brothers involved, who also did work with Tom Holland on Cherry, their film they made it directly after Endgame, these are all different perspectives and all different things that I think could make Spider-Man the anchor of the MCU. Guys, that's my, just my thoughts. Make sure to leave your thoughts down below. Please, 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 if I missed out on someone, let me know why you think that is, or maybe you disagree with me, let me know that as well. Thank you so much again, and of course, until next time, stay classy. Mm -hmm.